What is going on guys? It is Parker here and today we are going to be looking at Sundown's very cheapest sub. This is the Sundown LCS and brand new. You can pick up the 12 inch version for 90 bucks. Stay tuned. And that says it was 5,656.7 watts. Alright guys, yes, time for another Sundown sub. Y'all have been asking me to do more Sundown subs. So for this one, I picked up the very cheapest Sundown sub that you can get. Now I have done the SA version 1 Rev 3, so y'all go check that out of course. But yes, Sundown LCS. Let's get right into it for y'all. Alright guys, now here is the sub out of the box. Now, uh, this is as bare bone as it gets. Sundown has stated that when they made this sub, 100% of the cost went into the performance of the, of the sub. So there's no frills, nothing like that. Uh, there's not even a manual or anything like that in the box, which of course did buy this brand new. So that is a little odd, but is what it is. Let's get a closer look up at it. All right, guys, let's get a closer look up at this. Of course, Sundown, very clean looking sub, extremely stiff dust cap. Very cool to see that on this cheap of a sub. And then we do have a pretty soft paper cone, but of course at a $90 sub, I guess not really anything too crazy. And then we do have sort of a, just a low, just a normal low. Maybe some people would call it a mid roll surround. Definitely not the smallest surround I've seen, but I, I would not consider it to be a mid-roll surround. And then down here we have a stamped steel basket again going for as you know cutting as much cost as possible when it comes to this. The big thing you'll see we don't even have push terminals we just have these little uh, clip-on or solder-on terminals. Uh, they do have four posts though so you can run parallel or series or, or whatever fairly easily. And then we have a nice little magnet down here. It is a double stack and it does have pole venting and center venting on here. Really cool to see that. Um, there should be some good cooling again. They did say performance was the number one thing they were going for in this sub. We have a pretty soft uh, spider and we do have uh, sewn in tinsel leads and then we have a two inch voice coil now what kind of sets this apart though is this is a very high quality coil at least from what they say this is the black aluminum coil of course it's a high quality aluminum coil and has a very high quality high temp glue on it so we shouldn't have to worry about it unraveling or anything like that i think on my rockville k6 video i did I think the glue just didn't live up to it. So on that sub, the coil itself didn't actually fry. Um, I still had the correct homage going through it after the sub failed, but the glue just melted and the coil just kind of fell right off the uh, former. So this coil is still reading that is good. Funny, this one is still reading good as well. So I guess the coil didn't completely blow, but I do believe it at least came unraveled from the former. I'm sure knowing Sundown that really shouldn't be an issue here. Uh, their coils are known to be really some of the best coils out there. So you know if they put money into anything, that's where it would be in this sub. But other than that though, for $90, you're really not getting a whole lot Again, you don't even get like push terminals or anything you'd see on most other subs around that price point. I love this dust, tap, dust cap. It's kind of the fatter uh, one and it is super, super stiff. So really cool there. But the cone is about as flimsy as can be. Kind of see those leads in there. They are sewn in very nice and they're pretty thick. Uh, tinsel leads so not bad at all for this price point now this sub has 14 millimeters of X max so there it is now as I always like to do in my videos let's get a quick comparison of another sub you can get for just about the same price uh, for 10 bucks more you can pick up this this of course is the audio pipe BD 2 
Uh, they have the BDC 2 out now. Just a little bit updated version of this, but pretty much the same thing. But anyway, this thing you can get for right at 100 bucks. And I put this sub through some extreme tests and it gave me absolutely no problems. This is by far my favorite $100 sub, so I figured it would be a great uh, comparison to have it next to this sub. Um, in my opinion, Sundown definitely charges extra for their name. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but it is something to note. Just to quickly compare, this has a much bigger motor. I believe this has a two and a half inch coil. However, it is a copper coil and it, there's no of the high temp black glue on it. That being said, I did put it through some extreme tests and it did just fine. This does have a cast aluminum basket as opposed to the stamped steel basket. Um, we do have similar leads, but of course the terminals are different here. Kind of weird screw on terminals as opposed to these. And then this has a ridiculously stiff cone. I can't even really dimple it, whereas this guy, quite flimsy, much bigger surround. I don't remember the X-Max on this, but it is quite a lot for a $100 sub. Whereas, as you can see here, we're definitely not going to have near the X-Max. Now, this sub is rated at 750 watts RMS. This sub is rated at 300 watts RMS. Now, does that mean that this sub can take well over twice the power that the Sundown can take? I really don't know. Um, I kind of doubt it. Sundown is known for way, way underrating their subs. Whereas, like, Audio Pipe, I think they underrate theirs some from my experience. But I don't know if they way, way underrate it. So, again, something else to take into account there. So, yeah, I'm going to be making another video soon, really breaking down... Uh, what an RMS power actually is, and just kind of the issues in the industry with it right now. A lot of companies lying about RMS powers, and RMS power can mean different things depending on who tests it and whatnot. So again, video coming soon, how we're going to test all that out, but let's get back to the review of this sundown. All right, guys, this is the box we will be using to test out this sub. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know I've used this box quite a bit for all my kind of lower end, cheaper subs. Of course, the exact same box I used when I did the Rockville K6 in the last uh, sub-review video. So yeah, this box is uh, 2 cubic feet, tuned to 36 hertz. Sounds really good. Um, a lot of the subs I've tested seem to really, really like it. Of course, I've tested out several subs in it, and it's been awesome. Now, this sub, uh, the recommended specs says uh, 1.75 cubic feet. So this is a little bit bigger than what it calls for, but I think it'll be just fine for this video. All right, got this in the box. Let's just test and make sure that our impedance is coming out correctly. Of course, this is a dual four ohm sub and we should have it wired down to two ohms or thereabouts. I would imagine you can see that. All right, guys, got the sub in here and hooked up. Of course, we have it hooked up to my SMD AMM1 here in a little while. We will, of course, do some RMS uh, testing and probably some uh, peak power testing with this, too, just to kind of see what this sub can handle. But first, let's just play some music and see how it sounds. Okay, I spent the last 30 minutes messing with this thing. Uh, so this subwoofer, the diameter, is a good deal smaller than the last one. So to get it to fit in here where there's no air leaking is about impossible. And... Uh, of course, it doesn't come with a gasket, so that doesn't help either. Got it in there the best I can, but you can still hear a teeny bit of air leaking.
All right, guys, I haven't played it a little while there. Pushing it pretty hard, in my opinion, for a 300-watt RMS sub. And uh, so far, it's doing great. Don't smell the coil whatsoever. So that is awesome. Really, only issue I'm having is just that uh, the cutout for the box is a teeny bit too big for the sub. But other than that, it seems to sound pretty good, and it likes this box a lot. Again, this box is tuned to 36 hertz, and it sounds really good. All right, next up. Let's uh, play some test tunes through this at uh, different f uh, frequencies just so we can kind of see how it sounds. Uh, one quick thing, guys. Of course, if you saw the last video, you know I installed the first lithium battery um, right here. And so far, it's doing awesome. I've been out here testing with the car off. And we are sitting right at 12.8 volts. And it's not dropped any since I've been testing. And I've been sitting out here for a good... 30 minutes letting it break in and uh, testing out stuff so yeah guys this battery is killing it all right let's start out with 50 hertz 45 hertz 42 hertz 40 hertz 38 hertz 35 hertz. You really can kind of hear the air leaking through there a little bit, unfortunately, but 33 hertz. 32 hertz. 30 hertz. 28 hertz. You really see it starting to move there. 26 hertz. Alright guys, so 26 hertz there, really got it to start stinking, so I'm going to turn it down just a little bit on the head unit. Uh, again, lots more tests to do, so don't want to blow this up quite yet. 25 hertz. 22 hertz. 20 hertz. And let's see what it does at 18 hertz. Might as well go to 16, 15, all right guys, 50 hertz, all the way down to 15 hertz, I hope you enjoyed that, let's get to some more testing. Alright guys, we have the SPL meter in the kick, and then we have the AMM1 hooked up to dyno power, so we'll see where it peaks. Alright, we're going to do a 40 hertz test tone, and see what it does. Alright, so we got 135, and that says it was 5,656.7 watts. Don't think I believe that, but let's give it another try. Okay, we have it reset. Volume up a little bit. Let's see what we get. All right, so 133. And again, we clamped 5,000 watts. We have it reset. Now, I think it's saying 5,000 watts just because for a split uh, second, when it first pushes out, it's going to just push out a ton of power. But... Let's try it again, turn the volume up a little bit more. This time I'll turn it this way so you can see this, and we'll see what it does. 
4,800 watts. And we got a 135. Now, guys, uh, we have it turned up. Of course, if we had it turned back, maybe it would be louder. So let's turn it over and see. So we have it turned towards uh, the back now. 40 hertz again. Let's see what it does. We got a 138. And that was at 4,764 watts. Reset that and give it another try. Okay, next up, let's try 45 hertz and see what that does. Got a 139.3, and that time we read uh, 3,800 watts. All right, guys, this is pretty awesome. I think at 45 hertz, we can get it to 140, so I'm gonna let it the sub cool down for a sec, turn it up a little bit more in the head unit, and we'll see what it does from there. Dang it, guys. 139.8 at 3,876 watts. Okay, guys. I'm going to try 47 hertz. See if maybe that will get us to where we want to be. All right. Yes. At 47 hertz, guys. Look at that. Got to 140 in a... Really, really big car on a 300 watt RMS sub. Let's take a look at that right there. 3,596 watts. All right, guys, I hope you thought that was as awesome as I did. Again, on a 300 watt $90 sub, we got to 140 dB in a car that is massive. Some people don't even get that, and they have a little teeny truck. So, again, guys, really am very impressed so far. This sub definitely can take some power. You all saw it time and time again, or at least for a split second. That sub is seeing anywhere from uh, 3,500 all the way to 5,000 watts. Again, it's just a little teeny blip, but still, not bad. Normally, a max power rating is twice your RMS rating. This is seeing well over 10 times that. Crazy, guys. All right, guys, really don't want to do this just because I'd rather not blow up this sub like I did the last one I did this test to, but it's really only fair that we test out the true RMS power on this thing by running a 40 hertz test tone through it as close to that 300 watts as we can keep it. The last sub I did lasted for a minute before it blew at its, you know, rated RMS power. Let's see if this one can last at least a minute as well. All right, let's start playing it. Get as close as we can and see how long it lasts. All right, guys, so we let that run for um, over a minute and 34 seconds. So when I did the Rockville K6, it lasted like a minute and five or 10 seconds before it blew at its 
rated RMS power. Now, of course, it was a good deal higher than this rated RMS power, but the point being, this guy seemed to be able to handle that for well over a minute, no sweat. I did start to smell it, and at the end, it started getting a little bit stronger, so I decided to turn it off, but definitely seemed to last way longer at its, you know, rated RMS power. And really, the point of that is just that, you know, Sundown definitely rates, one, they underrate their, their stuff for normal playing, but Sundown is just really not about trying to say that they had the highest rated stuff and pushed our numbers up. They really are about building more of a quality product that accurately represents what it can do, as I'm sure y'all could see there. All right, guys. Well, that was my review of the Sundown LCS. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely did lots of tests there, and we ended up without blowing it up. So that is always awesome. Super, super happy about that. Got her sitting right there. But anyway, let me know what you all think. I think it sounded pretty good. Mine is a little bit of air leaking because of my box and the fact that there's really no gasket on that. But... It took power really, really well, as y'all saw. Definitely rated a lot more appropriately than a lot of other brands are rating their stuff. So Sundown gets huge props for that. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think, and y'all have a wonderful day.